Hey everybody, this video will be on infrared spectroscopy. Infrared spectroscopy relies on the interaction between covalent bonds and infrared radiation. Specifically, covalent bonds have the ability to absorb infrared radiation. Upon absorption, infrared causes covalent bonds to vibrate. And this interaction allows this technique to identify different bonds and functional groups in various organic compounds. Here, I've got six different types of vibration molecules can exhibit upon absorbing infrared radiation. You do not need to know these vibrations. However, it is beneficial to be aware of what vibrations look like. I have taken a table of all the infrared absorption data from the NASA formula sheet. In this table, we have the different types of covalent bonds found in various organic molecules and the specific wave number of infrared radiation each bond absorbs at. Wave number is a measurement of how many wavelengths or wave cycles of the infrared radiation that can pass through in one centimeter. In other words, the number of waves that can fit into exactly one centimeter. Wave number is specifically calculated by taking the reciprocal of the wavelength of the radiation. In this video, we'll be discussing the functional groups and the bonds, as well as the wave numbers of infrared radiation that is associated with each of the bonds. The first thing we should do is orientate ourselves when looking at an infrared spectrum, as it is initially not very intuitive. On the x-axis, we have the wave number of infrared radiation. The x-axis is usually orientated such that the higher wave number is on the left-hand side and the lower wave number is on the right-hand side. The y-axis can be labeled as transmittance, this is the percentage of infrared radiation that passes through the organic sample that we are analyzing. At the top of the graph, we have 100% transmittance. This means all of the infrared radiation passes through the sample. At the bottom, we've got 0% transmittance. That means no radiation passes through and everything is absorbed. Here, we can see a blue signal or a dip in the graph. This means at this particular wave number of infrared radiation, we have 0% transmittance. That means all of the radiation has been absorbed. This is what we call a major absorption. On the right hand side of the spectrum, we can see smaller signals corresponding to small absorptions. Now, typically when we are analyzing the infrared spectrum, these small absorption signals are not very useful as they are likely to be also due to contamination when analyzing the sample. The other type of infrared spectrum we can come across is when the y-axis is labeled with absorbance. This is orientated such that the top of the graph has zero absorbance and the bottom has 100% absorbance. It doesn't matter whether the graph is labeled with percentage absorbance or percentage transmittance as we saw earlier, as the graph's shape looks exactly the same. Let's start with alkanes and examine what the infrared spectrum looks like for this simple organic molecule. An alkane molecule has two types of bonds, a CH bond and a CC bond. If we go to the data sheet, we can identify the two wave numbers that correspond to each type of bond. And we can mirror that onto the spectrum and clearly identify the CH bond as it is a major absorption on the far left-hand side of the spectrum. We can also see the CC bond. However, this is a rather small absorption that can be often overlooked or not accounted for when we are analyzing the infrared spectrum. Now, it is important to recognize that the infrared signals, so the CH and the CC bonds, in an alkane spectrum, they are present for every organic compound, as these two type of bonds are present in every organic molecule. Thus, you can imagine an alkane's infrared spectrum is not very unique and specific. Infrared spectroscopy is also not very useful for identifying alkenes and for distinguishing between alkenes and alkanes. This is because the type of bonds present in alkene and alkene are very similar. That includes the CH bond and the CC single bond. Even though alkenes contain a characteristic CC double bond, on an infrared spectrum, this is often difficult to identify as the signal is often narrow small and surrounded by multiple major signals, as you can see here. Alcohol is easily identifiable in infrared spectroscopy. This is due to the presence of a broad major absorption due to the oxygen-hydrogen bond in an alcohol molecule. 
This absorption occurs between 3,230 and 3,550 per centimeter wave number. And on the graph here, this is characterized by a broad absorption signal on the far left-hand side of the spectrum. While on the topic of alcohols, it is important to understand that infrared spectroscopy, although it is very useful for identifying different bonds and functional groups, it is not useful for distinguishing molecules with the same functional group. For example, between propen 1 ol and propen 2 ol even though these are two different molecules, they produce very similar infrared spectra. In addition to molecules of the same functional group, these two molecules are also position isomers. Therefore, infrared spectroscopy is not useful for distinguishing most isomers as most isomers contain the same type of covalent bonds. In a ketone molecule, the carbonyl group, which is a CO double bond, can be easily identifiable as it often gives us a prominent major absorption between 1680 and 1750 per centimeter wave number. However, you can imagine the carbonyl group is a very common bond found in various organic molecules and functional groups, so this is definitely not a characteristic absorption that is special to ketones. On the top of ketones, we cannot forget its sibling, aldehyde. These two organic compounds are functional group isomers. Despite the fact that these are two different functional groups, ketones and aldehydes actually contain the same type of bonds. As a result, infrared spectroscopy is not useful for distinguishing between a ketone and aldehyde. Carboxylic acids are very easily identifiable using infrared spectroscopy. This is due to a very broad absorption signal due to the oxygen-hydrogen bond in an acid molecule. Due to the very broad shape, this signal often overlaps and hides the typical carbon to hydrogen signal that we see in every organic molecule. The signal ranges from 2,500 to 3,000 per centimeter wave number. It is important to recognize the difference between this signal with the OH absorption due to an alcohol. First of all, the OH absorption due to an acid is much broader and overlaps with the CH signal that's usually present in the same region. In addition, its wave number is much lower than that of the alcohol absorption. Thus, in terms of position, we typically expect the OH absorption for an acid to be to the right compared to the OH absorption in an alcohol molecule. In addition to an OH absorption, carboxylic acid is also a carbonyl compound. The presence of a carbon to oxygen double bond also gives rise to a prominent signal in the 1680 to 1750 range. The presence of a very broad absorption on the far left hand side and a prominent absorption in the middle of the spectrum are often sufficient to confirm the identity of the compound as a carboxylic acid. An ester molecule has two characteristic bonds, a carbonyl bond and a CO single bond. Like every other carbonyl group, the CO double bond can be easily identified in the middle of the infrared spectrum. However, the CO bond, since it's in a much lower wave number range, 1000 to 1300, it is often buried and hidden within multiple other major absorptions. As a result, the CO signal is difficult to identify. Therefore, infrared spectroscopy is not useful for identifying an ester molecule when used alone. Organic bases, such as amines, can also be easily identifiable using infrared spectroscopy. This is solely due to the characteristic absorption due to the presence of a nitrogen-hydrogen bond in an amine functional group. This covalent bond absorbs in a very high wave number range, between 3300 and 3500. It's important to also note the difference in appearance between this signal to the broad and very broad absorption due to the OH bonds in alcohols and acids respectively. As such, although these three bonds absorb in roughly similar wave number ranges, their different appearances are useful to distinguish between them. An amide can also be easily identified using infrared spectroscopy. This is due to the presence of two covalent bonds. First of all, the presence of an NH bond in the amide, roughly in the same region as that of an amine, as well as the presence of a carbonyl bond, that is the C double O bond, in the middle of the spectrum. This is quite similar to the infrared spectrum of a carboxylic acid. 
However, it is important to remember that in a carboxylic acid spectrum, we have a very broad signal due to the OH bond. This is quite different in terms of appearance compared to the absorption due to the nitrogen-hydrogen bond. The last covalent bond that can be easily identified using infrared spectroscopy is what we call a nitrile functional group. While this is not taught in Module 7 of Organic Chemistry in the syllabus, it is included in the NETSA data sheets. This is mainly due to the fact that the carbon-nitrogen triple bond absorbs in a very characteristic wave number range, between 2,220 and 2,260. This is a characteristic wave number range because no other covalent bond absorbs near this wave number. So when you see an absorption signal in this wave number range, this directly points you towards a nitrile compound. This concludes the video on infrared spectroscopy.